China Electric Plasma Jet Engine A team of Chinese scientists presented an innovative plasma jet engine design. In and of itself, this new concept is not revolutionary, but it could hold the key to development of engines that operate in both the atmosphere and space. The thrust output of this new form of engine is still insignificant when compared with the conventional atmospheric engines. However, once the technology is scaled up, this form of engine could revolutionize the aerospace industry. But before we examine this groundbreaking design in detail, let's learn how the plasma jet engines function. An engine powered by plasma is what it sounds like. Spacecraft propulsion is often envisioned as being possible with plasma-based thrusters. The ion thruster engine, however, generates thrust by extracting electrical current from a plasma source. Grids, or anodes, are then used to accelerate the ions to high speeds. Plasma engines typically do not need high voltage grids or anodes slash cathodes to accelerate charged particles in plasma source, instead relying on internal currents and potentials generated by a high current electric arc between the two electrodes. Due to the limited voltage employed for acceleration, this tends to result in a reduced exhaust velocity. What makes this new Chinese plasma engine so unique? Researchers from Wuhan University's Institute of Technical Sciences developed a new design that employs air and electricity instead of gases like xenon. Testing has revealed that the engine is able to generate significant amounts of thrust, suggesting that it could one day be used in current aircraft. This new plasma engine functions similarly to a combustion engine in that plasma is formed from a source of gas, which is then heated to a high temperature and allowed to expand to provide thrust. The ionized air is employed in the new engine to create a low temperature plasma, which is then pushed into a tube via an air compressor. Microwaves blast the air as it goes up the tube, forcefully shaking the ions and causing them to collide with non-ionized atoms. The temperature and pressure of the plasma were dramatically raised as a result of this process, resulting in tremendous thrust further down the tube. This incredible achievement is made possible in part by the employment of Flattened Waveguide, a rectangular metal tube that concentrates microwaves. The microwaves are delivered down the guide, which tapers down to half its original size as it approaches the plasma and then expands again, thanks to a specially built 1 kilowatt 2.45 gigahertz magnetron. This technique increases the electrical field strength and affects the plasma with as much heat and pressure as feasible. At the narrowest point of the waveguide, a quartz tube is also inserted into a hole. The air is driven through the quartz tube, then passes through a tiny piece of the waveguide before exiting the opposite end. As air goes through the tube, it passes over electrodes that are subject to an extremely strong magnetic field. This treatment removes electrons from air slash gas atoms, mostly nitrogen and oxygen, resulting in a low temperature, low pressure plasma. The plasma is pushed farther up the tube by air pressure from the device's blower at the tube entry until it reaches the waveguide. The charged particles in the plasma begin to vibrate within the microwave field once it enters the waveguide, generating fast overheating. As a result, the soup of atoms, ions, and electrons collide often, transferring energy from ions and electrons to the neutral atoms and rapidly heating the plasma. As a result, the plasma rapidly warms up to far over 1000 Celsius, according to the researchers. As the hot gas exits the waveguide, the exhausted hot plasma generates a torch-like flame, providing thrust. What is the new plasma engine's power? The researchers observed that if the airflow in the compressor is finely controlled, the flame jet created in the tube appears to prolong in response to an increased microwave power. The researchers attempted to calculate how much push was produced based on this observation. While this appears to be an easy task on the surface, there was one major snag. A normal barometer would be destroyed by the engine's 1000 degree plasma steam. 
To get around this, the team decided to think outside of the box. They came up with a means to keep a hollow steel ball balanced at the top of the tube. Smaller steel beads were used to fill this ball, allowing it to change weight as needed. The force would be such that it would counterbalance the gravitational force acting on the ball downwards on the emission end of the tube at a particular weight, allowing it to be hoisted above the tube at a certain altitude. Going ahead, the team is currently exploring ways to verify the thrust output of the technology with a more complex and dependable manner. They are also searching for ways to refine and improve the engine's efficiency. That said, things are looking up for this groundbreaking plasma thruster design, but, oh, if only it were that easy. Of course, such a technology comes with some crucial drawbacks. Certain folks who have looked over the data have noticed some odd absences from the team's already available data. The measured values do not represent the highest microwave power levels at the prototype's highest air speeds because of whatever reason, and no explanation is supplied. While this haze could simply be a result of a rig not being tested at these power levels, it could also suggest that the engine is having major issues at those speeds.